Man wicked. I don't know if this is a thing for try to put a dent in the vibes cartels appeal in some sort of way. But yesterday the Gleaner made an article saying two of the jurors who handed down the guilty verdict in vibes cartel murder trial are claiming that their lives have been transformed into nightmares since then. The two are now living overseas and say it has been difficult trying to make a new life in a foreign country away from their families. Vibes Cartel's lawyer Tom Tavares have then made a response to this which we'll get to shortly. But first, we are here what one of the jurors have to say. Why is this taking so long? Why are you going to jaw out the child of the man? She was referring to Livingston Kane. That's the man who was charged for bribing the court of $500,000 to come with a not guilty verdict for Vibes Cartel. She said that on a telephone interview to the Jamaica Gleaner. This juror relocated overseas under the Jamaica Witness Protection. The Witness Protection Program is designed for criminals who turn over evidence to the police. It is not designed for law-abiding citizens who built a life in Jamaica, said the former business owner. She said she is now struggling to find and maintain a job in her predominantly Caucasian neighborhood. If you are a criminal in Jamaica and nothing is going on in your life and you decide to turn over evidence and go on the witness protection program, you may enjoy it because you can start over. But for a person like me who is an extrovert, family oriented and love having friends around, the answer is no. All of my personal information has been changed, which simply means I have no past. I have no identity and I am a citizen of nowhere. That hurts. And according to the former juror, she has even contemplated suicide as a means of escaping her situation. She said she is prohibited from speaking to relatives outside of the eight days per year. They are allowed to visit her at a location away from where she lives. The juror said her identity has been changed and she has been barred from contacting anyone in Jamaica and from speaking to any Jamaican she may come across where she is located. Her social media accounts are also monitored and while the Jamaican government gives her a stipend and pays for her living quarters, she must work to take care of her other needs. But because she is not a citizen of the country that she now lives in, she has to work menial jobs. I spent Christmas by myself, I spent New Year's Day by myself and what angers me even more is that the person, the juror who is the main source of this whole thing was able to spend his holidays out on bail with his family. It is as if I am in prison for taking an oath to serve my country, she said. But my question is, why now when the Vibes Cartel appeal is being processed? The Jamaica Gleaner, when you think on easy. So you mean for tell me, say, she has so many strict regulations and can't even talk to her family. But she can give the Jamaica Gleaner an interview. We soon jump to what Vibes Cartel Lawyer have to say about this. But we are just finish up with the jurors. The second juror is not a part of the witness protection program, but applied for and was granted special migration privileges by the country where he now resides. After he outlined his ties to the Vibes Cartel trial and his safety concerns, but he left a wife and children in Jamaica and he has not seen them in person in more than three years. He fears that he will never be able to visit Jamaica again. He said, I really thought that this process would have been completed already. But since I moved, it has been a battle in court and nothing is really happening. I fret every single day for my family because up to this point they are still there and my son is getting older and he is asking where his daddy is every day and we can only video chat I can't even mention the sleepless nights all the hurt and the pain said the juror for the two jurors Returning to Jamaica would be their ultimate pleasure. Notice how none of the jurors talked about fearing for them life. Them just well want to come back to Jamaica to them family, to them friends, everybody. And them not really see the point in a Livingston key and bribery case. It for done with so them can come back to Jamaica to them family and them friends. But the Jamaica Gleaner just come with an article at this moment in time titled Bad Vibes. Is a winning headline that for them, you know? bad vibes 
So Vibes Carter's liar Tom Tavares Finson responded to this article. Mr. Finson has raised concerns about revelations in an article carried in the Sunday Gleaner yesterday, which focuses on the unfortunate situation of a juror in Vibes Cartel's murder trial who has since been placed on the witness protection program. The Sunday Gleaner article headlined Bad Vibes outlined the pressures faced by the female juror as she adapts to life away from family and friends. In the article, another juror who was not placed on witness protection revealed that he received special migration privileges after outlining to authorities his role in the case and concerns he had for his safety. And just to keep you guys on track, the jurors are witnesses in the corruption case of Livingston Kane, the fellow juror who was accused of offering $500,000 to return a verdict of not guilty against Vibes Cartel. But yesterday, Tavares Finsel, a Queen's Council and attorney for a cartel, questioned the timing of the disclosures made in the article and noted that at no point in their expressions of fear did the jurors cite any threats against their lives. One issue that concerns me is that one of the jurors is on the witness protection program, leaving one to wonder how it is that the Gleaner was able to contact a witness on the program. That is frightening to me, said Tavares. So the headliner said bad vibes, basically I make people think said the witness fear for them lives because of vibes cartel but them not show no sign of fear for them lives, them just want to come back to Jamaica. And just the thought of the jury has been made available for an interview with the Sunday Gleaner at this time appeared calculated to be prejudicial against Vibes Cartel's appeal. Tom Tavares Finzel said, What I can say is that it would not, in my view, have an impact on the matter currently before the court, simply because of the quality of the judges of the Court of Appeal and their ability to ignore matters such as this. However, it certainly has a potential to prejudice the position of the appellants, especially where there is a possibility that there may be a retrial in the matter. Tavares Finsa also took aim at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, questioning certain actions that could expose jurors. So basically what I say is that he have confidence that the appeal won't be affected by this because the judges are more professional so they know how to ignore things and like a child judge that would unfollow up the media or hear some idiots on the internet and say yeah man cartel guilty him kill my grandmother already him kill my auntie and my cousin them already and when them are trying it are gonna be in at the back of them head because them hear it and them want to believe it even when there is no evidence to prove say I him do it them are gonna always remember say now this man sing the song kill them all and done now this man sing the song say him a killer ask the man we sell crab but with the three appeal judges them know how to ignore those type of things that are what Tavares Fins now say however this appeal might get a retrial and then this article can have an impact on Vibes Cartel's case. Usually, the only thing the public would know of an empanel jury is their name and the occupation. There was a particular allegation made against one of the jurors attempting to bribe other jurors. The DPP took an unfortunate decision to prosecute the accused members of By the jury. taking that decision, the veil of secrecy which protects a jury was lifted. Other jurors had to write statements concerning deliberations and allegations of interference by the accused. Remember we talk about the rule of secrecy and one of my previous videos on this whole Vibes Cartel appeal topic. The rule of secrecy is among the jury so anything they talk about they can't bring it to anybody else, family members, friends, nobody at all. But this jury was required to attend trial in the arbitrary RM court to give evidence and under any normal circumstances a juror would be allowed to go about his business and that would be it. Instead, they must go court on a number of occasions and give evidence in public. And as far as the article is concerned, a foolishness that. If you want to call it bad timing, you can call it that but big for fool move that. Anyways, to the persons who comment and ask me what I want for the Vibes Cartel appeal, it's in process. I did a video on that already. It's in process. A normal appeal wouldn't take like two to three days and for the judge to deliver a judgment for that two to three days wouldn't take two to three months. Now, Vibes Cartel appeal is one week and add. Yeah, over one week. So just do the calculation there. So I want to just look out for a response by December. Them time there, yeah. 
it's going to take a good while. It might be even longer. Who knows? Maybe them deal with it quicker. They have a lot of summations for run through and a lot of bag of things and all of that we may explain in the other video. So you can check it out. And sorry if this video never have enough explanation in it. Um, and I do too much reading. Yeah, I don't know my videos them are normally like that. But I just saw it go today. You see, I do too much video on this topic. So I think I get almost everything out of the way. And I never want to sound repetitive. <laughs> Man, tough.